you know, if information and technology was the answer, leadership's giving direction, creating the environment, and your people feel like they belong to something, two minds creates a third more powerful mind. Mm -hmm. It means you've got to have community. We've got the author, Jeff Olson, here with me. A corporation is just a bunch of people who collectively come together about a common cause or goal. And they were given the freedom of their own motivation, their own thought, they failed. This is one of the most fundamental things to success is laws of association. You can always find the content that can make a difference in your life, but it's not gonna be the hows, it's gonna be how you do the how. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to meet the man who wrote the book that changed my entire life when it comes to success and just overall quality of life and giving me that sense of calmness about the fact that what I'm doing every day is getting me where I want to be. I think one of the biggest challenges out there with people who are trying to run businesses or become super successful in their life is they have a lot of uncertainty about the hours that they spend every day and the tasks that they do during those hours. And will those tasks actually get me to the top of this massive mountain that I'm trying to climb? And if you have that sense of clarity and certainty that what you're doing every day will get you there, then it, it gives you a sense of peace about what you're doing. And this book, The Slight Edge, um, written by this man, Mr. Jeff Olson um, is an absolute game changer. I've been preaching and, and spreading and sharing this book with tens of thousands of people over the last decade. And everyone who reads it says the same thing. This book changed my life. This is the only book that I've read not only twice, word for word, but three times. I've never even read another book twice. And so back in 2008, I got back in the real estate business after being homeless, sleeping in my car, eating out of people's refrigerators. And I read 100 books during that time. This was my absolute favorite book. And when I picked it up, it just grabs you. And the way that he articulates this simple message behind what he's, it's simple and it's so insignificant, okay, um, in the moment. And that's what he shares with us today. Um, I, I can't say enough about this interview. This is my favorite interview that I've done so far. This guy's a living legend. He's a hero of mine, and you're really going to enjoy this interview so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get right into it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. So <laughs> I got a huge treat for you guys today. You guys know my favorite all-time book, The Slight Edge. I've got the author, Jeff Olson, here with me. What's up, bud? Ricky, I'm good. Thank How you. How are you, man? I'm really good. Thanks for having me. I want to I wanna get into your companies, your life. Um, you, you never really went out and built your own personal brand. A lot of people don't know a lot about Jeff. Right. You know, they know a lot about the slight edge and a lot about your companies, but they don't know a lot about you. Um, I want to get into all that. But first off, I just want to know, like, how's life? Life is good. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, kind of reaping the rewards of a lot of effort, but uh, enjoying still working. I don't think I'll ever quit doing that. And, and I have three beautiful grandbabies with my daughter and my son-in-law. And I'm enjoying that and live here in southern Florida, which is a great place to live and enjoy life. So I'm very happy. Man, um, I got a I got a DM, a Twitter message from you eight months ago, nine months ago. And I've got messaged by pretty big names in the real estate industry. And then you messaged me. It was a whole different thing <laughs> when you messaged me because your book was the only is the only book that I not only read twice, word for word, every word, but I read it three times, word right. for word. The only book, I never read another book twice. I probably skimmed through a book a second time, but I never read through it twice, definitely not three times. It's one of those books that, like, I, I'm not going to name which books I'm talking about here, but there are books that you read, and you just can't quite get into them. Um, and you just kind of quit reading them. Like, there was big name books, you know, and everybody's like, you got to read this book, and I'll, I'll start reading it, and 
I can't make it through the first couple chapters. It takes so long to develop. But your book, it, it hooks you in there and it keeps you engaged the entire time. Um, but when I got that that Twitter um, message from you, I was like, wow, you know, <laughs> the man, because I've, I've recommended the book, as you know, right. to tens of thousands of people in the real estate industry. So I was just wondering, first off, like, how did you hear about me? Actually, my son-in-law, Damon, is, uh, who has taken a very personal interest in, in trying to build the Slide Edge brand because I don't spend much time there, uh-huh. uh, saw you. And he, mm-hmm. he spoke to me about it, and he said he was going to reach out to you. And I said, well, go ahead. You know, and, and you guys built that relationship, and it's led to this. Got you. Got you. Yeah, I was like, wow. So take me back. Again, I want to talk about your companies. I want to talk about the big lawsuit that, uh, that you just won that was kind of framed up as David versus Goliath. Um, but the book, take me back because I want to know everything about this, <laughs> like how it came to be, how you came up with the idea, you know, the title fits just perfectly into, you know, the book itself, you know, tell us how this came to be. Sure. Um, well, first of all, I, I you know, I had, tra- I had a traditional business and we might call the fortune 100 world and it had experienced a lot of growth and success. I actually became manager of the intelligence systems division at Texas Instruments. And then I got into build my own traditional businesses and build one of the largest solar manufacturing marketing companies that eventually moved into the world of uh, working mainly with independent contractors, okay, uh, to get them to do whatever they're going to do, usually in a sales format. And <clears throat> through that process, and I kept on seeing one thing. I saw very smart people people that in their life could achieve things, whether it was in athletics or working for somebody or doing things. But when they were given the freedom of their own motivation, their own thought, they failed. So here's a person who was very good at showing up at the job, working at certain hours, sitting at the desk, doing a defined job, could do that over and over, couldn't stand it, okay? Mm -hmm. They get a chance to go out and work in the world where they could be their own boss, do their own thing, and they would go into the witness protection program. <laughs> you know, they, they couldn't think. And so I re- realized there was people were missing a thought process. So that mm-hmm. used to bother me a lot. Okay? Why, why do you think that is? They, they grow up W-2 and they're just kind of, that's we've, what we've, they're kind we've of. We grow up in structure. Yeah. Okay. In the, the educational system teach you to fit into structure. Um, people really are not taught the, the entrepreneurial mind spirit. And what happens when, when people are given the ability to, make their own decisions, they become their own worst boss. And you know, I used to see that over and over. And I saw, especially in the independent contractor world, really good people, people that if they'd been with me when I was in the Fortune 100 world, or if they'd been with me with my traditional companies, would have been successful. But when, you know, it would have done a good job and I would want them around me. And when I saw them come into this world, you get excited about them because mm-hmm. they at the degree they were successful in doing this mm-hmm. they come here and they fall down on their face and mm-hmm. so i started that really started affecting me and i started paying attention to it more and i started speaking to it more but i really it, and so the whole thing was forming with me and and uh and at that time i built two very large direct sales organizations globally i be, had become the ceo of a international uh electronics uh, sales company and the whole process was evolving. I started teaching about your mindset, more about your mindset and how you really between your ears is your office, you know, cause you don't have an office. You might have an office, but you're really your office cause you're not, you don't have a place to show up at eight and stay till five. You don't have a boss saying, this is what you're going to do. It's you. Okay. Mm-hmm. I started uh, teaching that to people and, and, and thinking about it. And, um, and I, it, Eric kept asking me more about it. I started teaching, teaching, teaching. I came up with this little concept that was how to think. And I typed it up and I gave it to people. And everybody started coming back saying, wow, this is wake. It's making it work. I get it now. I get why I need to show up every day and consistently, persistently. Same thing you would do if you owned a So that was like do the little things every right. day. Mm-hmm. And so you, you saw people that succeeded in the structured world crash and burn in this, right. you know, independent you, contractor world. When you have structure, you show up consistently, persistently. Mm-hmm. You better show mm-hmm. up with a good attitude. You get fired over mm-hmm. a long period of time. I mean, mm-hmm. that's what you do if you're going to climb the corporate ladder. That's what you mm-hmm. do if you're going to invest your life savings in a traditional business. That's what you do if you buy a franchise. 
you show up consistently, persistently with a good attitude over a long period of time. Mm-hmm. Those are the four, first four principles of Slide Edge. But you go to work for yourself, you don't show up. You don't show up consistently. You don't show up with a good attitude. And you don't do it for over a long period of time. Why do you think that is? Why do you think people go from that where they do show up and then they have this huge opportunity over here? They, they, they're they excited. Sky's the limit. I'm my own boss. I can make as much money as I want to make. And they, they go from showing up every day to not showing up every day. Because... They don't, they don't have the right philosophy. Okay, philosophy is kind of like everything you know, how you hold it, how it affects what you do. All the side edge is is a philosophy. It's the way you think, okay? You, you don't, when, you, when you're in the structured role, franchise, business, whatever, of course, having a good mindset and philosophy, that's gonna, you're going to go faster up the structure ladder than other people, but, it's, you, you're, you have, you're, but you're mandated to. You've got to be here at that time. You've got to stay to this time. You've got to sit in that chair. You've got to do that project, okay? Mm-hmm. The, we're going to grade you. We're going to give you, uh, you know, uh, raises based upon certain performance. There's a structure around you. And all of a sudden, you don't have that, and you don't have the right philosophy because now you're in control of your own self, and you won't do it, okay? And so that's what it was. I, I, started, I wrote about that, and um, when I gave it, to people, like I said, they start coming back to me. And what was the moment that it clicked for you, where you were like, "Wait a minute!" It's because they're not doing the little things every day. To where you thought, "Let me form this into a, a document." Well, enough to enough to give to people. Say, you need to read this. You need. I mean, yeah, you need to know. You need to be somewhere every day. Well, what ha- what happened is I'd, I'd I'd come out of that. Okay, and, and that's where I was at, and I started formulating this in my head. Uh huh. And and uh, start talking about it, but it really hadn't. I didn't have no structure about it. It was just part of maybe everything I talked about. It was it was fit in there, and I was trying to talk about mindset and discipline and that type of thing. And I started a company called the People's Network. It turned out to be the biggest personal development company in the United States in the 1990s. We were had our own TV network. We had our own studios in, in Dallas. You know, Brian Tracy, Jim Rowan, Les Brown, Dennis Whaley. All those people would come in. And we would film them, and we had our own uplink facility, our own transponder and a satellite, and we'd shoot down. To, and we were working with Times, uh, Time Warner, uh, Comcast, Continental, Cox, all those people. And we were producing content, mm-hmm. okay? And every person who was in the space of personal development was lining up at our door. We were the hottest thing. Mm-hmm. And everyone wanted to speak mm-hmm. for us, okay? Mm-hmm. And so I, at that time, was getting to know all – best people about family, finance, health relationships. I was, you know, you know, going out with them, hanging out with Les Browns and, you know, you know just all the people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I saw something that kind of bothered me that kind of tied into this. Okay. What I saw is we were producing this stuff and these people who had great content that spent their life learning something and, and now put it into a book or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, they would present it to people as if you absorb this content, it's going to change your life like that. Mm-hmm. You know, 90 days, 150 days, but it, mm-hmm. was, it never was five years. Okay? Mm-hmm. It was, mm-hmm. you're going to, it, it was quantum leap. Okay? Right, you're right, right. And so I found myself being the person producing all the content, putting it all up. And these people were speaking how they speak and everybody was getting, getting the information and they would have that, what I call that day of, of disgust, that day of decision. I always think the day of decision comes after the day of disgust. And I talk about that in the book. And they would say, I'm going to do something. And so they would read the book about their health or mm-hmm. about their finances yeah. or the relationship. Yeah. And they absorb the book. And then they would engage in the activities of the book. And it would be 90 days, 120 days later. And they didn't see the results they thought they were going to get. Mm-hmm. And two things happened. And this is when I really decided to start hitting me hard, Okay. So two things happened. Number one, they lost belief in the information. There was nothing wrong with the information, okay? It was the way the, inf- the philosophy of which the information was given, the philosophy was quantum leap. Mm-hmm. Plant seeds and cultivate. Not there, I mean, plant seeds and harvest. There was no cultivating, okay? It was like, you get this book, and you're going to harvest. Okay, you cut to my seminar, and you're going to harvest. Yeah. And so they would do that, and the vast, vast majority, vast, vast majority would never harvest because that's the now that's not the natural harmony of life you plant seeds cultivate and you eventually harvest so that was bad they lost belief in the information but there's nothing wrong with the information it was the philosophy mm-hmm. by which the information was given to them mm-hmm. number two 
They wouldn't go back to where they started when they had that day of disgust. They'd go back to a place worse than they were. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Worse than they were because they now lost belief in themselves. Mm -hmm. I had that moment. I made the decision. I engaged in the information. I did the activity. It didn't work. I'm not worthy. And all of a sudden I said, I, I, whoa, I can't really, this, something's wrong here. So that's when I started working on the slide edge because the slide edge is a precursor to the health book. It's a precursor to the finance book, the relationship book. It's the book that's going to tell you, no, quantum leap doesn't exist. If they tell you quantum leap, run, okay? Mm -hmm. The philosophy is show up consistently and persistently with a good attitude over a long period of time, cultivating to make it work. <clears throat> that's what drove it. And so, so when I saw that, I, then I realized there was a real huge hole in this whole personal development world mm. by which the way they, and, and I don't blame them, that's what you, you do. Okay? Yeah, I mean, it's sales. what you do, okay? And uh, so that is what got it going in my head. And so I, then I, I actually um, typed up, I think, 120 pages. I sent it out to my friends. I didn't have the name, the slide edge yet. And they all came back saying, wow, this is really great was stuff. Was it named something at the time? It was nothing. It was just it nothing. Was, it was just it a is. document. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Don't ask me. And this is after the People's Network. This is after you witnessed all this. Right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. This People's Network was like the icing on the cake from all my business experience building companies and building sales forces and, and being perplexed. You know, like Jim Rohn says, don't be perplexed by the perplexed. They can be perplexing. <laughs> was Jim Rohn one of the speakers Jim there? Jim Rohn was a big part of my life. And I yeah. actually say that at the beginning of the side edge. Yeah. I, I see you'll see Jim Rohn in this book. We became really good friends during uh, mm. in, in, the, in, in TPN, okay? But um, so then the, when I basically I saw all that stuff, I, I went through that, I did the 120 pages, I sent it out, everybody came back and said, wow, this is really cool. So I actually went to Mountain Shadow Resorts in um, Arizona, got a, <laughs> a room, went and set up in a corner of, of, the, of the resort looking down at the pool, sat there for four days, putting it all together, mm. actually starting to put together all this in my brain. So I drawing. the first time I drew a line and I drew the K and. And what, what year was this? When do you this think when like you did 2000... that? 2000. Two, three. Uh, it's back in there. Four. Yeah. yeah. Early two thousands. So I was putting it together and it, it didn't have a name. I came back, start really writing everything. And then I gave it the name right edge. Okay. That was its name. And then I start to put together a 169 page book, change it to the slide edge because it, it came the book. How did you come up with that? The slide edge? Yeah. How did you go from right <clears throat> to, to slide? <clears throat> because slide is more indicative of every single day doing the slide yeah. thing. But did you, <clears throat> did you brainstorm and th just think, I got to make this title better and just brainstorm and come up with a bunch of different ideas? Did you sit down and go through that process? No, the, or I did really it liked just... the right edge for a long time. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it, it just got to that point where I had this, this, Tiffany one day that that's the right thing. And then I went to get the name and actually the name was owned by somebody I knew very well, Paul Meyer, you know, mm -hmm. big person in personal development, contacted him, was able to work with him and, and acquire the name from him and, uh, and had the slide edge and he'd used it 30 years ago. So he know? had the slide edge yeah. before. Yeah, he had used it 30 years before in a company called SMI, huge huh. uh, training company wow. a long time ago. And he's, what he, was he using it for? Same thing? He, it's kind of the same concept, mm -hmm. you know, but his, mm -hmm. his, his words were different. And I never seen that information. I didn't even know he was using it until I went looking for it. And I realized they said, this person has it. And I go, well, I know that person. So I, <laughs> I contacted him and, and got it from him. But uh, in, in doing so, then put the book together, sent it out to about 200 of my friends. My whole goal was nobody ever has to ask me about it again. I don't want to talk mm -hmm. about it. And it just took off and it has exploded in the millions and millions and millions of books, you know. So you, you wrote it so your friends would leave you alone. Mm -hmm. So you're, that's, is that the definition of introverted? Well, I'm, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> I'm, I'm definitely an introvert extrovert. <laughs> like, I'm going to write a whole <laughs> <laughs> paper for you. Right. So you leave me alone. So, so they loved it and it took off, but it was just, was it actually in a book form at that point or was it like, it, Regular uh, paper? No, it, it, it went from paper to a, a, a softback, 160 pages, to now it's a hardback, mm. also softback, and to a much larger book. Because as, as, it, as it just took, it, I mean, when I say took off, it took off. It mm. took, just take, didn't take off in my world. It took off in my, my world's world. Mm. You know, mm. they start word of mouth. It's, mm. it's done what it's done on word of mouth. This book's really mm. not had any love as far as marketing. We, 
it's never it's never been promoted, advertising dollars spent on anything. It's just a word of mouth book. Just think about how big it could be it, if you put some money behind it. It'd be hard to get bigger. <laughs> it's <laughs> done really well. How, it's done five thousand copy, five million copies. Uh, that's what we guess. Yeah, you know, because it's it's there, it, it's moved from the publishers here to publishers in Japan and over in Australia and. That Mexico, and plus it's in a lot of countries and different languages that I don't even know it's in, which means they're doing it. Mm-hmm. Like I know it's in Turkey right now, in Turkish. Well, right. I, I don't have any relationship with anybody. In Turkey. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and, and, and I'm really uh, I hear about these things and I don't care uh-huh. because my, it's more important to me the message gets out. That's all I really cared about. Mm. The fact that it has become a big selling book, you know, is 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 neat. You mm. know, but it's just, it was a message that was missing. Mm-hmm. See, that's what I'm trying mm-hmm. to say. Yeah. I'm, in this world of, I mean, these were the best. These were the mm. top New York Times best-selling authors, lecturers. There were okay. Mm-hmm. I had them all around. I mean, I watched them, and nobody was speaking to this. Mm-hmm. And it was like, that's why I said it's the precursor. You, you can you can always find the content that, that can make a difference in your life, but it's not going to be the hows. It's going to be how you do the hows. Mm-hmm. The, the the slide edge is how. You do mm. the house. It's not mm. really the house. Right. It's how you do the house. Yeah. yeah. So it, the, the, the information is over there. Like, you know, your audience here is in real estate. The house are there. Mm. I mean, it's everywhere. Oh, yeah. Okay? Yeah. It's not the house. It's how you do the house is going to separate you from the other people. Information's everywhere. I mean, you can learn how to do anything on YouTube or anywhere. You don't have to pay for courses and stuff like that, which kind of opens up a whole different conversation with social media. Mm-hmm. Um you, we were talking before, and you, you, you've, your companies have kind of built a little bit on social media. I don't know what extent you could share that, but you never really built your name or your brand. I mean, you just started an Instagram account, right? Or have well, you ha- my team has. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not even on there yourself. No. Do no. you go on social media at all and look at anything? Very. I go. I I, I, I stroll through Facebook and Instagram a little bit. And just to see what's going on. Right. I don't engage. Yeah. Really, you know. Coming from your world where, you know, no social media existed and now you're in this world and you kind of go on there from time to time. What What's your perspective on social media? And, and I, think, I, I think it's brilliant. I mean, it, it, it's it's a great, it, it allows you to cast a very large net. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and, and so my companies use it. I mean, we have mm-hmm. a whole staff that they mm-hmm. do. And mm-hmm. that allows you to cast a very large net. But I think this is where why I've been successful in using it because I don't, I'm one that believes that you cast a large net to create a, a real relationship, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And so I'm really big about uh, creating environment associations. The best analogy I can use is, you know, if information and technology was the answer, okay, everything would be solved already. Because mm-hmm. you, you just go back 10 years to now, there's way more information about anything you want to know about mm-hmm. finances, relationships, health, it's times 100 it was available 10 years ago. If you want to know, you know, if it, technology, the ability to access information is like light years ahead or was 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. So the fact is on anything in your life that you want to better in your life, the amount of information and the amount of access through technology access is greater than it's ever been. Mm-hmm. So why is it? Finances are getting worse. Relationships right. are getting better. Right. Health is getting better. You, right. you got to ask yourself that. And the, the answer I've come up with is if information technology this is an example I like to use. If information technology is the answer, that means you'd walk up to an alcoholic, say, here's your alcoholic anonymous CD-ROM. Congratulations, you're no longer an alcoholic because mm. I just gave you information through mm. technology or mm. hooked you to my website, wherever yeah. it might be. What makes it work is do they use information technology? Of course they do, okay? But it's the environment and associations you put them in that makes the change, that keeps them on the right track. And this is where people get, are getting, and I see getting lost. The smart people out there are using information and technology, leveraging with everything they got. We just talked about one company before this podcast. Mm. But they're missing that whole environment associations, which is, mm. the, is the glue, mm. it's the cul- Especially what's, what people are missing now more than they've ever missed is community, culture. Mm, mm. People want to belong. Yeah. They want to feel like they matter. You know, yeah. and, and, and there's, that whole, that's, there's that whole thing called the word synergy. Where that means a group of people go someplace together they can't go to by themselves. Mm-hmm. So if you're sitting out there in a social rule, 
you know, information technology, you're not, you don't, you don't have the power of the group. You know, Napoleon mm -hmm. Hill said, two minds creates a third more powerful mind. Mm -hmm. That means you've got to have community. And so what we do, what I do, mm -hmm. is, yeah, we leverage social media as hard as you possibly can, but we equally create ways to bring people together so they can interact with each other mm -hmm. in a common environment, okay? Yeah. You know, when the people come together, alcoholic, they have a common environment. Okay, mm -hmm. when they come mm -hmm. or the business, they have a common environment. Yeah, if you do that, you use social media to cast this large net. But you got to consciously create environment associations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Can you do that digitally, or does it have to be? Well, do you feel like it needs to be in person? I be I believe we proved that you can do it to a degree, to a pretty good degree through the pandemic. It was, it, it was very interesting to watch the pandemic when we separated. And then, and then you know, you, you saw Zoom explode. And yeah. all of a sudden we were interacting in so many ways. People mm -hmm. were having s social hours on, mm -hmm. on Zoom, okay? Mm -hmm. And then it was really interesting as we came out of the pandemic and the struggle to try and figure out that hybrid, okay? Yeah. But what I'm seeing, and in what you're seeing even now in corporations, you're seeing everywhere, is people realize we got to get back. Mm -hmm. We got to get touching each other. So it, it, it just takes effort. Um, it, it, if you don't have the leader of the company believe in that, it's not going to matter. Believe in what exactly? Believe Just in that there's got to be community. Community. There's got to be community. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you, to do that, it takes effort. Yeah, it, it takes an investment. You know, you got to be willing to be part of it. You know, you can't you can't mm -hmm. hide. Mm -hmm. You got to mm -hmm. be in the middle of them. Yeah. You know, and uh, we, we I mean we I'm taking, I don't know, 800, 900 people to this five star resort down in Mexico. I do it every year. You know, and and uh, there'll be 800, 900 people there that we pay for their flight, we pay for their hotel, we pay for their food, their drinks, and everything for the whole time there. And I will stand down there uh, by the pool all day long and talk to any single person anytime they want to. Mm -hmm. That's how you start community. Right. Okay. You can't have them there and you're up in your room. Looking yeah. Down. Right. Right. That right. doesn't create community. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Yeah. So you, you see a lot of companies like that now mm -hmm. with the way digital has went. Um, yeah, it just kind of makes me wonder. And, and some of these companies have a lot of different groups within their company, mm -hmm. right? You've seen that, right? Mm -hmm. With your company, you know, how do you get the groups to, to come I, together? And I don't have that much. You really don't have, have a lot of that. We, matter of fact, we hardly have any of it. Um, right. I, yeah. Especially in the independent contractor world, you have tribes. Okay. Tribes usually form from lack of leadership at the top. Okay, mm. because if, 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 if the leadership's giving direction and it's creating the environment and your, people are feeling like they belong to something, they stay together, mm. okay? When, when, the, when the leadership is not providing the, the direction, the training, the communications and all that stuff, then the tribes will start evolving. And I, I, I find tribes to be dangerous. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Think about it, when you go into a traditional world, and I was at Texas Instruments, and I was in management at Texas Instruments. There's no tribes. You don't have tribes in, in mm -hmm. corporations. Yeah. You have Everybody's only, on the same team. Because a corporation, a corporation is just a bunch of people who collectively come together about a common cause or goal, and they work, you know, you're over in IT, you're in, you know, you're in the sales department, you're in the you know, fulfillment department, you're customer service, but we're collectively – going there together okay there's no tribes you have those from departments but mm -hmm. there's not tribes like, right but you're getting the sales ruled <laughs> mm -hmm. and they're mm -hmm. not getting direction mm -hmm. tribes start evolving right and so the energy that tribe does they start competing with each other mm -hmm. versus collectively working for something yeah and and, and i wish more owners saw that because mm -hmm. they think it's cool that tr these tribes are evolving because mm -hmm. they're doing what i don't have to spend the money on training yeah. i don't have yeah. to spend the money on this stuff but what you're doing is that there's only so much energy in your company. Mm. And so when that energy is not all focused, like synergy collectively going yeah. somewhere, it starts competing. Mm -hmm. You lose that. Yeah. Yeah. What, how do you, what, what are some tips to be a great leader to keep that synergy? Well, <laughs> to me, a great leader has, has, to have, has to have integrity, character, purpose, and meaning, okay? It has to be real. And, and uh, people are going to read you. They're, they're going to, they're going to, when I talk to people about leadership, I, I, I really speak a lot to, 
I believe, okay, it doesn't mean you believe, but I believe there's an unspoken language. I believe I'm an energy person, okay? Mm. And I believe people will only respond to what I'm doing, you know, who I am. So if I'm not living my life the way I want them to be, if I'm not mm. doing what I want them to do, mm-hmm. okay, then it's hard to be a leader, okay. a, a genuine leader. So it's not that complicated. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, 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 you know, what's that saying I just recently heard? What's, this, what's, what's the definition of a good shepherd? Smells like a sheep. <laughs> okay. And, it, and I believe that. Right. Yeah. When I, when I was actually in the field selling, I had way better response from agents as I was in production, getting listings, showing properties, you know. Your, your language changed. Your energy right, changed. Right, right. And then when I got out of production, um, it's still great. Mm-hmm. People still love me. I'm mm-hmm. still growing. Everything's awesome. But it's different. Mm-hmm. And I feel that. Um, well, and you, and you, you can't say 100. You can't, you can't, you know, the production you did when you're just selling versus the production you do when you are managing. I get that. Mm-hmm. Okay. But you, you know, but you can be still in production with your team teaching them mm-hmm. how to do things, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you're still engaged. They see that yeah. you're part of that process. Yeah. That you're, you're not just, you're not in Ivory Castle. You're still leading by example in terms of output, mm-hmm. work, hours, all that good stuff. And they sense that you, you know what's going on. Mm-hmm. This is, this is cool, man. It's fun stuff. Thank you for, yeah. for hanging out. Um, I want to switch over to, to the, your company. Mm-hmm. Number one, tell me about your company that you're running right now. And then want to get into this lawsuit and everything, but what, <laughs> but what it, what is the, the company? Well, there's a couple of different ones, but Neor is the big one. Mm. It's a it's a it's a direct sales company. Okay, mm. but it's very it's very different. What you might call the t- typical. It's a very e-commerce direct to consumer model. Mm. Uh, the vast majority of its sales are are just to end users, not involved in the business in any way. Mm. Okay, so mm. it's a, it, it could compete in the e-commerce world. It could mm. compete in the direct to consumer world, independently of the direct sales world. Okay, um, it started out in skincare. It's moved into wellness and into hair care and into fitness. Uh, really focuses on uh, cutting edge technology, look, looking for you know, universities, you know, breakthroughs, patents. We're always looking for products that are unique, you know, are c- exclusive, first to the market. Mm-hmm. Patents are things that we have that have a barrier of entry from anybody else replicating or duplicating them. One thing I've learned, because I came from the traditional consumer world before I got into this world back when if you can if, if you're successful and can be copied you'll be copied mm, mm. <laughs> so you need to try and have things you need to pre- assume that you're going to be successful the product when you're developing the product you'll be trying to get things that have sourcing ish things or, or guarantee certain rights patents mm. that means that your products have uniqueness and exclusivity to them okay wow. so we do that almost uh-huh. through our entire product line. And then the other thing we're really big on is r- value. And everybody goes, well, of course it's value. No, I mean legitimate value. You know, mm. One of our top products is a, is a, is a night cream, okay? Mm. That night cream, if you gave it to 20 other cosmetic companies, big names that you know, it would be four or five products, okay? We, what we do is we consolidate. We, mm. we try and put as many products because... What they're doing is they're trying to get you five, five four or five products yeah. because they can more. Charge and you're actually spending times. more for the bottle and the packaging than you are for the ingredients. Uh-huh. I know this. I'm in right. this world, okay? Yeah. We don't do that. Mm. Okay, we, we, we pack as much value we can do. That, so it's we, consolidation mm. is one C. The other one is concentration. We don't pixie dust, okay? Mm. We to have an ingredient on the label. It, we go as well as we can go into it. So mm. we're really trying to create value so that, that this product really can stand on its own. And that's why we have such a huge customer base that voluntarily buys our products without any contracts and nobody's on a contract with us. It's, it's, it's you know, if we can bring value, the products will work. We have the clinical data to show it, but you try and it works. And, and our, our number one sales technique in our skincare especially is we don't sell a product to some of us. We take a picture of them before they use it. Mm. Then we show them, that picture two to four weeks later and they go, oh my, you know, you don't see it. Yeah. You can't see it if you daily. Yeah. And they go, Oh my gosh. And so we literally bet on the product. The, the, product the cream is doing the slight edge on them. Exactly. <laughs> it, it, exactly. You know? and, uh, and, and so that's, you know, so that, so it's, it, it, it just took off, exploded. We yeah. broke records. We were fast, 12th fastest growing company in the United States. One time we were the number one fastest growing consumer product. How United big States. is it? Like, can you even say top line I, revenue type numbers. stuff? 
It, it, that's um, something we've never done. How many salespeople, employees, stuff like that? That's a well, employees just over hundreds. So okay, you, here and then you go around the world because we're over in other, you're in Asia and uh-huh. other places. Um, but then we outsource a lot of, of people. Um, it's hard. There's not. It's really not good. And I don't give numbers about our field. Yeah, but the field is kind of you, you, we. Uh, Vast, vast majority of our people are really people that are operating like in the gig economy. Mm. All these people looking to make an extra five hundred thousand, two thousand dollars a month, just mm. you know, maybe driving an Uber, doing a DoorDash. Well, that's mm. that's a huge group of people who just love what we have because they can just mm. sell our products, mm-hmm. build a little book of business, you know. Because mm. because one thing about our products is people repeat. So you go out and get customers. All of a sudden, it's repeat, and you can be doing that while you have your job with your family. Most of our top income earners were uh, housewives. Mm. We started to just make a little bit of extra money on the side and it exploded for them. Yeah. Um, and so that's the vast majority of our sales is just a bunch of people who are making mm-hmm. secondary, you know. It's income. really cool to build a business like that because your salespeople are kind of built in and they're basically kind of, in a way, kind of your customers that turn into salespeople. Right. It's, it's really, it, yeah, but it's, it's organic. You know, and yeah. most of our, first of all, the vast, vast, vast majority of our sales are customers just buying mm-hmm. the product. Very, you know, very little of it's really going to our uh, people who are, we, we call them brand partners, people who are partners in, in our brand. Okay. Um, but they can, what's so cool is if once they start generating that income, you know, just selling, then also they, they have other people say, well, God, you're just selling these things. You're, you know, the product works, you're making some money, I'm interested. And all of a sudden that pops their head a little bit mm-hmm. and they move in. And the side edge is a big part of this because mm-hmm. we really are, that's when we start really getting into, okay, you want, you, oh, now you want to be in your own business, okay? Mm-hmm. It's going to start your mindset, how you think, you know? And, 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 and we start down the whole side edge training, we start down that whole process. And to get them to understand now you're in your own business mm-hmm. and your mindset's going to have to change. Yeah. You said that you guys use social media, Mm-hmm. and stuff is it just through the salespeople just posting about their success or does the actual company the corporation of it actually use social media to advertise and stuff two problems we're so we're doing it ourselves mm-hmm. okay out there but what we're really good at is we have a back office and in the back office uh, there's a whole set of trainings on how to do social media teaches them how to engage when to post personally when to post your product, you know, mm. how, how to do that. There, mm. there is an mm. art to mm. that. Mm. And people have a tendency to overdo it. Yeah. Okay? They need to stay more on their personal side yeah. and just sprinkle in the other side. So we right. teach them how to do that. We show them how to do that. We're constantly updating that content because, as you well know, the algorithms are changing. Mm. Mm. The, the, what worked six months ago is not working as well now, but mm. what's working now will work differently in the future. Mm. So we're constantly upgrading that back office. We're constantly teaching that weekly. And what we in, in this one you know, studio thing we had that we shoot out, uh, and then we're con- we we are constantly giving them assets that they can use to put out. But we're really teaching them how to do their own assets because there's nothing mm. better than you live talking. Mm. And we and we, t- you know, we and we teach them how to just be rat, raw, authentic, and transparent. Don't you know the dog barks? Don't cut it out. People like the dog yeah, yeah, barking. Yeah. You know the kid comes up and cries. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Go with it. You know. Don't try and be anything but other than yourself. And that just gets people to relax. And so, but we teach that to people. And so we give them what they need, maybe until they have the confidence to be more of the message themselves. At first, for a new person, maybe out of their comfort zone, never done anything like this before in their life, but is intrigued by it, you, you want to give them something to get them started. Well, that would be using other people's stuff. Mm. But eventually, if they're engaging, they'll start re- realizing, hey, the more I put more of my stuff in, while using other people's stuff, mm-hmm. my success goes up, and all of a sudden they they start becoming their own person. And we have people become you know s- social stars. Yeah. You know? I mean, just <laughs> <laughs> they're amazing. You know, yeah, they're on camera every day. Yeah, yeah. Now it's amazing what happens when you start using social media. Some some people mm-hmm. some people are better than others. They have that little that little it factor. Well, it is the slide edge, though. You've got to do it mm-hmm. consistently, persisting for a long period of time. It's like the hockey puck. You, you're, you plant the seeds, you start doing it, you're getting no results, 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 you're getting no results and boom, it goes. Mm. And, and that is what the slide edge is all about. Mm. You, you, know, you got to stay in, you got to stay in the, doing the proper activity with a good attitude while, when you're not seeing the results. The same thing you do if you're farming, you know, and we, we actually did a, a, a data analysis on our 
and our sales force, okay? And we, and this almost ran consistent through everybody, but say somebody got in and they, their goal was to make an extra thousand dollars a month. Mm. Their goal was to make $10,000 a month. Or their goal was greater. We, we have them all, okay? Mm. No matter what it was, if you took when they started and when they achieved it, okay? Mm. So let's mm. just, I'm gonna use a round number. It's easy to do. And let's say it was, I'm gonna make a thousand dollars extra a month mm. on top of my job, okay? And they say they got to it in a year. Could t- two years could take six months. What, you mm. know, ten thousand. Mm. I, I could use any number, okay? But right. we're gonna use one thousand. Yeah. And they got to it in one year, mm. okay? No matter what it was, if it was ten thousand, it took them five years. You could just run the math, and it was mm. almost this every single time. Mm. Halfway to the time, so it was one year. Mm. Halfway to it, you're at eight, eighteen percent. They're making a hundred and eighty dollars a month, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but they are six months away from making a thousand dollars a month. Mm-hmm. There, that's what the slide edge is all about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You've been doing the right activity consistently, persistently for six straight months. Your goal is to be making a thousand dollars a month, and you're making one hundred and eighty-two dollars a month. Mm-hmm. Okay, would you keep going? If you understand the slide edge philosophy, right. you would keep going because yeah. you, you were just right there to go. Mm-hmm. And, but most people don't do that. And see, that's what's, what we train a lot is. That's why you have to be there to help a person along. Because see, in, in the traditional world, you got a job. Six months, you just keep going. Yeah, you, right. You, you buy a franchise, the, word of, word of the, the, the rule of thumb in franchise, you got to invest five times more than you want to make. You want to make $50,000 a year, you got to invest $250,000. Mm. Would you quit showing up six months later? <laughs> no. Right. No. Even though you're not making anything, okay? Mm. You, you just keep doing it because you, you have to. Yeah. So that, that's a great example of Slide Edge is trying to get the mindset that you would have to have to climb the corporate ladder mm-hmm. or to build a franchise or to build your own business yeah. to do it where you're an independent contractor. And it's between you because what will happen is they'll get in, they're all fired up, they plant the seeds. It's really fun planting seeds. Mm-hmm. It's really fun harvesting. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. cultivating takes time, <laughs> yeah. you know. And usually 80% of the work is done before you see anything, Yeah. okay? Can you stay in the game? That's what the whole slide edge is about. It, mm-hmm. it works in diets. It works in, you know, your knowledge, it works in your business, is that getting people to realize that that you got to stay in the process and stay positive when you're not seeing the results. Yeah, but that's how life works. Mm-hmm. Okay, why would you expect it to work any way other than that? Now that you're in charge of your life, mm-hmm. as soon as you're in charge of your life, you'll go, ah, it's not working. Mm-hmm. And then they, they go from one thing to another thing to another thing to another thing, all of which don't work <laughs> because they never stay in it long enough. They never enough. stay in long enough And then to they see stop it. believing in themselves. Yeah. Okay. And they start now looking for entitlement versus responsibility. Mm-hmm. And, 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 the, and, li- and life becomes miserable. Yeah. My entire life is a slight edge. Everything. I wanted to make a million bucks. It took me 17 years from right. when I got my real estate license to, to the year I made mm-hmm. a million bucks. I just hit 100000 on YouTube. It's been seven years. And it's just been... 20 or 30 subs a day. And I, I never had but anything go viral. If you probably did the math. You said seven years. You, you would go three years. It was way down here. Yeah. Through, after three years, I was at about 20. Okay. So you're, there you are. You're halfway. Yeah. I said 18%. Yeah. You're halfway. You're 20%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly the same thing. Yeah. Halfway for us was 18%. Mm-hmm. Running through all the things. You're saying you're about halfway. Yep. 20%. Yep. That's the slide edge. It is. You got to just keep pounding. When I read the book, it, 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 the, the one reason it really hit me is because I was already doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, I was already doing all the little things every day. It just gave me that little that, that, extra confidence right. behind it. Like it's, you're doing the right things. Right. Um, and it's just. What, that's what I wanted out of the book. I wanted people. To, it was real important and why it worked a long time ago when I was just teaching it because I go, you can do it. It's not there's anything in here we're asking you not to do. What you got to understand is you got to be more consistent about it, okay? What it did for you is it validated what you're doing. So right. when, you, when you got validation. And I needed it. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like it didn't do anything. I needed the validation. And, and, and it was, but it was so good. Did you, were you a writer? Did you write stuff before that? No, I'm not. Because you, you, you put a lot of authors mm-hmm. to shame. I mean, you, you made a lot of big names look like a kindergartner. Because as I think, well, the way you told the story <laughs> and not only that, but the way you articulated the whole thing, it really, we, 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 I know you've been all around a lot of big people, a lot yeah, of big I, I personal development lot, people. My whole goal is, is, is if this is going to be a book about doing little things, keeping it simple, keep it simple. Okay. Mm. Make it make, I want people just constantly going, aha, 
aha, aha. I didn't want every somebody go think something was outside their reach. I'd seen that when mm-hmm. I had the TV network. And so the whole time in the book, I was just trying to make it relatable to a person that was searching for what to do. Knowing they could do it, they just were not doing it long It was enough. just that one little missing piece. Mm-hmm. Wh- where do they teach you that? They don't teach yeah. it to you anywhere. So all the, when you had the People's Network and had all the big names mm-hmm. come up, nobody really even, did they even mention, this could take a little while, you know, you really got to stay in it for a while. You got to be patient. Well, of course, you, they say that, but if you really look at it, it's, it's quantum leap. It's, yeah. It's, you know this is going to change you in a hurry. Come to my seminars to change you in a hurry. I'm not putting them down. These of course are, not. Content's good. These are good people. And, and they've helped millions. Beyond. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge proponent believer in it. I was just trying to get people to g- give this content more time. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, my whole thing is I have a, like the seven things I want to show up consistently, you know, with a good attitude over a long period of time. You got you to you know, have desire. You got to have faith. You got to be willing to pay the price because there's a price. And then you got to do it with integrity. You know, people always, that was the seventh one. It was like, well, what is integrity? I go, you got to do it and nobody else is watching. Mm. See, that's, this is the hard part mm-hmm. because remember, I'm, tr- I'm trying to replace the philosophy of your mind when you are in a job and you have structure, okay? You show up because you have to because you're being watched, okay? Yeah. You know, you, you're, you're building a, fr- you, you invest a couple hundred thousand dollars in a franchise. You show up because the couple hundred thousand dollars is watching you, mm-hmm, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and maybe your spouse is like, you mm-hmm. just smell like saying, so you, integrity though, in the slide edge, when you're kind of just out there by yourself, mm-hmm. you got to have it, your own integrity. You got it. When nobody else is watching, you got to do the little things. And this is where I always say, so sliders is the, the, doing the little things that seem to make no difference at all in the act of doing them. And you do them over and over and over and over. Because mm-hmm. I can take anybody. I can take anybody in the, in the real estate industry. And I could, you give me the, you know, three, four, five things that have to happen. I've done this mm-hmm. with insurance people. I've done with people. Mm-hmm. None of them are hard to do. Mm-hmm. Hard to do is something you can't do. Okay. Mm-hmm. Easy to do is something you can do. It might be not <laughs> something you like to do. Yeah. You might be uncomfortable. Right. But you can do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. You might not be good at it yet because you haven't done it enough, but you can do it, okay? And so what, what you got to understand is when you do the activity that's going to achieve what you want, you say, you, you're, I've gotten into real estate, and I want to be, make $100,000 a year as a real estate agent, okay? And then she's in a number, okay? But, and here's the activity, whatever that activity is. You do it today, that this little activity seems to make no difference at all in the act of doing it in the moment, are you any closer to 100,000? No, mm. you're not closer. And if you don't do it, you choose not to do it, are you any further away? Mm-mm. No. The difference between doing these little teeny weeny activities, okay, that you have to do consistently, persistently, the good attitude over a long period of time, between doing it and not doing it in a moment is not even notable. Mm-hmm. You're not, you can't even see it. It's, mm-hmm. it's so subtle, you can't even feel it's it. It's easy to say, it doesn't what's matter. the point? Because you know what? It doesn't matter in the moment. But the only way you can achieve what you want out there is in the moment. And this is what mm-hmm. people got to get. The only thing you have is the moment. You don't have the past. You don't have the future. You have the moment. It's the only thing you have. Yeah. And the moment doesn't matter. It's insignificant mm. in the moment. It's mm. in, it doesn't matter in the moment. It's insig- mm. insignificant. If you do it or don't do it, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant compared to what you want, but it's the only thing you got. So you got to string those things together till you get there. Mm-hmm. And so the dip from where you're at to what you want in life is insignificant. <laughs> 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 but you have to do. Right. In the moment. Yeah. It is. If you don't go out and do that thing they teach you to do mm-hmm. daily, they say, well, you need to do this every day. You don't do it tomorrow. You don't fail. Mm-hmm. You do it tomorrow. You don't succeed. It's irrelevant in the moment. But it's the only thing you got. Mm. And it's the only thing that gets you there. So successful people do the little things that seem to make no difference at all in the act of doing them. They do them over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Consistency, persistency, the good attitude for a long enough period of time to get there. They do it with integrity. And guess what? 80 to 90% of that stuff you do in the moment, nobody's watching. Mm-hmm. Nobody's watching. Yeah. So, so you go, nobody's watching. 
So, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If I don't do it, I won't fail. If I do it, I'll succeed and nobody's watching. So mm -hmm. I'm just not going to do it. It's right then is when you find out who you are. It's right then. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Nobody's watching. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, which is what most people do. It, that's why 95% of people don't make it. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's not because they can't do it. It's not because they're not smart enough. They don't have the ability. Okay? It's in the moment, they don't have integrity. In the moment, they don't have integrity. Because they think it doesn't matter and nobody's watching. That's why the seventh principle of the side edge is integrity. Mm -hmm. you got to quit lying to yourself. Right. Do what you say you're going to do. And do it when nobody else is watching and it doesn't matter. Right. Because <laughs> it does matter. <laughs> People that don't do what they say they're going to do to their self and, um, you know, they, they won't do the things that they can do, but they're, it may be uncomfortable. I've always thought that there was maybe not a big enough why or not, not a big enough reason. I know when I was in, in all by myself in my office making calls every day, um, my eyes were, were, was on this million dollars because I grew up poor. Mm -hmm. I grew up roofing, ha roofing houses with right. my dad right. and um, never had anything. And making a million bucks was like mm -hmm. this dream. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that, that was my big why, and I wasn't going to let anything stop me. And I was going to make these calls every day, no matter what, until I got there. And it took 17 years. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I went through 2008, lost everything and all that. It's a big story. But my point is, is I had this driving reason of why mm -hmm. I was doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so that it kind of built, I kind of had the integrity built in mm -hmm. because I had this big driving right. carrot, mm -hmm. you know, in front of me. Do you think that that is a big part of, part of it as well? Or what do you do for people that don't have the integrity to go? I mean, I have agents that just, I'm like, you can go make a million bucks if you make these calls every day for, you know, three or four years, you're done. You'll make a million bucks if you just do what I'm telling you to do, and they still won't do it. Well, sometimes I can answer that question from five different directions. Because mm -hmm. some people, you got to be careful, give them a number that they can't relate to. I mean, for some reason, mm -hmm. you could relate to a million dollars. Okay, I grew up poor, too. I grew up raised by a single mom and, you know in New Mexico and, you know, God, God, God. Um, God bless my, my, my childhood. I love it. But, um, and I had dreams too, okay, aspirations. But I, you know, I, didn't, I never thought I was going to be who I am. You know, pretty much, I'm kind of like you. I grew up, uh, I, 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 I call it less than. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was just always less than, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but then when I started achieving things, that's why I think it's important a, per, a person's got to have goals that are in their minds achievable because once they hit it, their, 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 their belief of what they can achieve will grow. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I agree. You've got to have a why, you know, yeah. a why is what gets you up early and keeps you up late. You know, you, you know, it, like they say, you know, when Napoleon Hill came up with the 13 things that successful people have in common, he says the first one is desire, mm -hmm. you know, and the desire is driven by your why. Yeah. Okay. So you got to find that, you know, but, you know, how many people have even read the book Think and Grow Rich? I mean, just, you know, right. I, I love that when uh, Jim Rowan said, and Jim, uh, Jim, Rowan, Jim Rowan is my favorite author yeah. of all time, yeah. you know, of all time. And, but there's great ones out, out there. But I love what he said. People come to him with their problems. You know, I don't have a, I can't get my why right. I don't have discipline or anything. And he, he always said, well, okay, well, tell me the last three books you read about that subject. And he mm. goes, the answer was always none. And he goes, <laughs> and he goes, well, that's a bad number. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you got to have a why, but you got to also be willing to do something about the why. Yeah, okay? of course. And normally the, per, the person you are is not the person that's going to achieve the why. It never is. You know, you, you, the why is always bigger than who you are. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you, don't, you, you, you don't say, that's my why and I'm it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm there. Who you are is so, so, so much smaller than your why, but you got to put in the work to get there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where people, I think, lose sight is because you got to have that to keep drawing you to do the act, read the books, you know, do the activities, get the right mentors, fail your way to success. Like Watson said, the founder of IBM, you double your rate of failure. Mm -hmm. You know, these are, but this is why, again, back to environment associations is so important because if you're an environment of people who have a why, you're going to have a why. If you're not an environment, people don't have whys. You're not, you know, yeah. You are the combined average of the five people you associate with the most. If you're around five negative people, you're mm -hmm. negative. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so if you are, you need to, get, you need to weed your garden and mm -hmm. go find five mm -hmm. positive people. Mm -hmm. If you're around people who have no whys, 
you're not going to have a why. And so it's very yeah. important. Laws of association are one of the most important, you know, uh, you know, they, they always talk about your philosophy is what creates your attitude. Your attitude creates your actions, which creates your results, creates your lifestyle. Okay. Yeah. If you, if your your philosophy is driven by books you read, seminars you go to, but the, I think the most important thing is the people mm-hmm. you associate with. And, mm-hmm. and, and again, Jim Rowan said this, I'm not stealing from him. He goes, you know, there's some people you used to spend, you know, two days with, but you probably only should spend two hours with them now. Mm. There's other people you spent two hours with, you probably only should spend two minutes with now. Mm. There's people you spend two minutes with, you probably shouldn't even spend time with. He goes, mm. but on the other hand, there's people you're not spending time with, you should spend two minutes with. There's mm. people you spend two minutes with, you should spend two hours with. Mm. There's people you spend two hours with, you should spend two days with. He, mm. he goes, you need to consciously focus on yeah. who you're letting into your life. And that's life. tough in today's world because mm-hmm. we're so busy, you know, just trying to make it. But if you just let it be, it's going to just be. Right. You know, I mean, this is one of the most fundamental things to success is laws of association. If you don't do anything about it, you're not weeding your garden. You're just letting the garden be what the garden's going to be. And it's not going to be good because overall, there's not being negative. But overall, the rule's negative. Mm-hmm. We are, yeah, of we course. Are, we are born with negative subconscious minds. It, it, your mind has been evolving for a long time. Started in the plains of Africa. When they looked, like we all come from there, our brain ev- evolving. Back there, the bushes went like this. They call it the reticular factor in your brain. The, the, the psychologists talk about this. And what it has, you look because there's an animal that can get you. 99% of your brain's evolving has been living in fear of its life being taken. Mm-hmm. Okay? So you live you have a brain that it's called the reticular. It, it focuses on the negative first because it's trying to keep you alive. Well, now it's doing the same thing. It's just when TV comes on, you see negative, you go right to it. See positive, mm-hmm. eh. Mm-hmm. You know, negative mm-hmm. people, wow, tell me more about that stuff. Yeah. Positive people, eh. So you're, you're naturally drawn towards <laughs> negative. Yeah. You're not naturally drawn, t- drawn towards positive. So you got to create that positive environment. Yeah. It, it's, it, you, are, you have got to fight the wiring that you were born with. Yeah. That's one reason I'm not at a million subs right now on YouTube, because a lot of my stuff's just too positive, mm-hmm. you know? And the guys that are real negative, I mean, yeah. they're crushing it. Mm-hmm. Because they're playing to that They're part playing of the brain. to it. Playing yeah. that part. But I, that's when you kind of find out what you want to be in. Did you ever have Tony Robbins at the People's Network? Uh, no, he, 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 Tony and I met a couple of times. We had mm-hmm. the same agent, Jan Miller. We, we spoke about it. You know, I, we were big in our own way. He was big in his other way. Mm-hmm. And we were both doing our thing. And, yeah. And we, we did have a conversation. I think we sat down at the Fairmont Hotel in Dallas for about four hours and, and spoke to it. And uh, he's, I always loved his content and all that. We just, it just didn't work. You know, yeah. it, it, it was just two ships passing the night. Mm-hmm. Both are good ships. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, I, and I'm really proud of him. He's gone on and done. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He's doing great. He really took on social media mm-hmm. when it first came along. Well, he's, he's always personal brand. He's always trying to stay out in front of things. Like yeah. Um, the lawsuit. <laughs> I want to talk about this before we wrap things up, um, just so you can, you know, voice kind of what happened and, and your perspective on it and everything. But this was a big one. This was seven years, yeah. a seven year battle. Uh, they called it David versus Goliath. Um, tell me about what, what exactly it was and, well, you know, it's, 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 I don't want to go you know, without going too deep. <laughs> Basically the, 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 an agency of the federal government, uh, started inquiring into us and we made, you know, and for all the wrong reasons and it actually through discovery found out the reason they required us because we we're successful. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, and There's a lot of success, successful companies out yeah, there. Yeah, but you, we just happened to get on the radar screen. Uh-huh. Okay? And so then they, they came in with a filter in the mind of what they thought we were, which we weren't. Uh, I, I, we produced uh, what, 6 million documents, 16 rounds of production, gave them everything, hired. Can you, know, you say what they thought that you were doing? They thought we were. They, they, when they came in, they, they, they were just questioning everything. But they ended up eventually throwing pyramiding laws at us, income claims laws, um, product claims, what's called agency, making people agents, means of instrumentation. We're giving people the, the means and instrumentation to go out and do the wrong things. And all the things we knew we hadn't done. So we gave them everything, all the information they wanted um, six years ago. Mm-hmm. Okay? Cost us millions and millions of dollars. Hired the top econometrician there is uh, mm-hmm. who used to work for the FT, FTC and, and um, gave them all the data uh, then. And they, they knew then, but they just kept coming. 
uh, because what I've learned through the process is they, and they tell you this when you, you sit down with them, there's a thing called, they call it choking. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're going to, they'll tell you, you won't, you go to, you go to court with us. You're not, you're not going to make it. And I, you know, I said, well, no, we're right. If the, if the facts and the law, we should be, you know, we're, mm-hmm. I'm gonna, I'll do it. And um, <clears throat> then choke point started. And I know what it means. I mean, immediately the bank we had told us we had to leave. Mm. I wonder how that happens. Okay. Mm. Have, have to leave. Um, so we go from a tier one bank to now we have to go around patch banks together. Started, okay. So they started canceling you. They, can, they told us they had 90 days to leave. Leave your bank. Leave your bank and go find a bank in 90 days. When you got to tell the other bank, I'm I'm coming to you right, because I'm in a bank lawsuit. To the, leave. I'm in a lawsuit with the government. Uh huh. Go. Nobody wants you. <laughs> so you go from a tier one bank with no returns. You know everything. A, a great company. Okay. Nothing wrong with it at all. Uh, to a tier three or four bank with low service. Okay. Merchant processors. The exact same thing. Now think about losing all your merchant processors in 90 days. Mm. All your suppliers will not give you terms anymore because they don't want to have an accounts receivable. Okay. Mm-hmm. Your half your management team leaves because they're afraid. Half your field leaves because they're afraid. Uh, insurance rates go up. Social media, you become, you know, you, you, be, you, you, you get tarnished in yeah. social media. Uh, competitors use it against you. Mm-hmm. That's choking. Mm-hmm. And they apply it hard. Right. Okay? Did you realize that was the definition? No, I didn't quite know the level was going to go yeah. to. But, but I had studied other companies that had gone up against the government, and you could see how they all eventually gave given in. Mm-hmm. And what they do, choke point leads to fencing in. Fencing in is, is a term they use again, <clears throat> which is to get you to agree to things that aren't the law. Okay. But if they can get a company to do this and a company to do that, then it fences in the industry. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so we've had this company agreed a few years ago to something. This other company agreed because they were getting choked. Mm-hmm. And, and they agreed to things that aren't the law, but now it becomes the guidance. Okay. And so they had like 12 of those things they wanted us to agree to. And uh, th- these are things that I couldn't do. Actually, I could have done mo- I th- actually could have done pretty much all of them but one. I think we would have been fine because we weren't what they were trying to say we were. We were just an e-commerce platform. Uh-huh. We were really clean. But uh, th- they wouldn't agree to anything. And so we... It was the commission structure or something? A lot to of the, things like that. There's yeah. a whole different ways how yeah. things are paid and all that. Basically, I'm mean, putting massive pressure on you to agree to things that aren't the They need to go to Congress. You know, it, they love ambiguity because nobody knows what the rules are. So everybody's, you know, trying to feel. I mean, we read everything. I studied everything. Our lawyers studied everything. We did everything as good as we could. Well, eventually we ended up, in, you know, suing each other, going through the battle, spending you know, $23 million, probably losing a billion dollars in sales through the whole thing. Mm. And, um, and going through the aggravation, because it's brutal what you go through. That, that, you know, that one, the thing I heard once is every, you have trillions of cells in your body, and your cell hears every emotion you have. Well, mm. my cells were not hearing good emotions for seven <laughs> years. But, you know, I, w- I was not going to give in. Yeah. Just, you know, and so nobody's done this. So we, took, we took them to court in our arena. Our industry is 100 years old, massive industry, massive. Mm. Uh, nobody's ever taken a court and gone, and, and we, we didn't just win. We won every single thing. And mm. we had a good judge. Weighed all the evidence, did all, went through all the facts, all the data, and this is the, a landmark decision. And what's good about it is finally an industry kind of knows the rules, mm-hmm. okay? And so, you know, what do we get out of it? We won. You don't get anything back. You don't get right. your money back. Yeah, you, you, they don't pay court costs and lawyer fees. They, they don't get nothing, okay? But you did the right thing, you know, and you stood it for yourself. So it, it's a landmark decision. It, it, you know, this industry is, is, the, is the bread and butter for millions of people's lives. And if we had... Um, if we had given in to their demands, the industry would be completely be different. Lot, the industry would be different. Yeah. You'd yeah. had to play by different rules and mm-hmm. it would apply to yeah. everybody at that point. So uh, and I hope, I, I think this might give the industry some backbone because it's mm-hmm. scary. I mean, when you're looking down the barrel of the, the, the federal government, it's not pretty, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not. And it makes me wonder how <laughs> they go from choke, trying to choke you out to you winning. Well, it, it kind of, backfires now because the federal judge who's a very prestigious federal judge this is this, this is a chief justice she's amazing uh who, who really wrote a very detailed uh, ruling okay has now established case law that is kind of what you they're called the neo standard now 
that a company can look at. If we can look like that, a judge, mm. you know, very respected one, has acknowledged that is legit. The industry didn't have that. We had some things, it's called Coscott case law from decades ago, and a few things people were holding on to, but there was there really wasn't boundaries, you know. Mm-hmm. One day you're playing football, the next day it's basketball, the next day it's you know baseball. You had no idea. Right. It, it's just never right. it's just moving all the time. Yeah. Now we know we're playing this game. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so it's really I'm I'm proud that we were able to do it. We were able to do it because we were legitimate. Mm-hmm. And we, we played by the rules. We did everything yeah. right. For whatever reason we got there. I'm I'm an I'm an American patriot through and through. I really am. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we we filed the lawsuit initially start the whole process. Um you know, I got my Salesforce on the phone. I says, listen, you know, I'm, I love this country, but this is a country of laws. That's why it works, and nobody's above the law. Mm-hmm. You know, and, I, and so I was willing to go the road on it. I wish I didn't have to do it. You know, it's not a fun thing. You said that uh, that it, it was kind of, you feel like it was, there's, it, it's kinda, they kind of look at independent contractors. That it's, you, do you feel like it was kind of an attack on independent contractors? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, I know they went after agency. You know, which is your your independent contractors or agents, mm. and, and went at that really pretty hard. <clears throat> um, and then also, there's another thing in there was called means and instrumentation, which means I have the means to get people the instruments to do the wrong thing, which is kind of, kind of be a cousin mm. to you know their independent contractors. But yeah. Yet I'm right. I'm giving them the tools to do the wrong thing, so they're agents of mine. Mm. And and uh, that was argued, and um, but was not ruled in their favor at all. It was ruled. In our favor, which is you know, really good because you you, you you break that you know mm-hmm. how, you look at the the insurance industry, the real estate industry, the brokerage industry. I could go on and on and on. You know, is it, there's a massive you know it, it economy out there of independent contractors. Mm-hmm. Okay, and um, my 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 feeling is go to Congress, get up the laws, make it an even playing field, right, and we'll compete. But you can't just arbitrarily pick yeah. people and try and, and bully them into submission so that now you control an industry. Mm-hmm. That's it's mm-hmm. not. Profitable. Well, that's what's happening with real estate. I was telling you about the lawsuit that's happening. Did, have you heard about it before? I, I told I heard you about it a little bit briefly. Yeah, it's uh, mm-hmm. it's really something, man. What's happening? And the judge hasn't ruled on that. It's probably going to get appealed up to the Supreme Court and everything. But um, some agents are, are, are thinking, well, this is just, you know, their attempt to take us out and all this. I said, they could take you out on a snap of a finger. They could just turn all of us into W-2s mm-hmm. like that, go from 1099 to W-2s, well, they, and it would crush. They have, they, 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 they have to go to Congress to do that. Right. Okay. And, right. And, 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 and that's a long road to hoe. Oh, it's a long road. Long road to hoe. But that's what they want, mm-hmm. okay, from what I see. Mm-hmm. What I've experienced, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and and, and that, that's a battle that needs to be fought by everybody. It's mm-hmm. not just fought by me, not just fought by my industry, but by every industry. I hope I hope your industries come together mm-hmm. and rally. You know, the one thing that's good about what's happened in my industry, people are now realizing we need to come together. See what happens when I when I made a decision to fight, I became radioactive. Every ran. I mean, nobody came towards us because they're afraid to be associated with you. Mm-hmm. Because and I get this because. They're asking them, they're at, in the back of their mind, it goes, is, are they telling us the truth? Is there a smoking gun I don't know about? Yeah. And I line myself with them. I support them. And then mm. come to find go out. To court and come to find out there was a smoking gun. Mm. Now I'm associated with that. So everybody ran from us. But then now it's found out is I was telling the truth the whole time. Because mm. I told the story. I kept telling the story over and over. But um, so now I think the industry as a whole will maybe step up. Because there'll be another person. They'll be another. Oh, yeah. They're not done. No. Man, I, I just want to thank you, number one, for doing that and fighting them, writing the book, doing all the stuff that you do, coming here, talking to me, thank you. hanging out. Um, are you – I get the I get the feeling by your social that you're doing another push on the slide edge in some way or something like that. What's the next step for, for that and where can everybody find – Whatever. Well, there, there, you know, you go to slideedge.com and there's yeah. uh, everything there. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start giving it some love. You know, there, we're, yeah. The, the uh, and Damon, my son-in-law, has become a big proponent of it, and so we're working on because I have a podcast in the Live Happy Space because I want to live happy magazine mm. and um and, and do that and, and you know so we have a podcast on the Neor the company mm. and, and this here so we're, we're gonna 
give it more push. Okay. okay. And plus, you know, I haven't re, I, I need to rewrite a little bit of the book because like the whole talk I did about the moment, mm. that's not in the book. Mm. You know, that has to be in the book. Yeah, I know. That was it's powerful. A, yeah. Very powerful. How, and you, it, there's how many revisions are there now? I don't know how many. There's been. Yeah. Yeah. You've done a couple. Yeah. 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 Well, man, I, I don't know. I don't know what else there is to say. Thank I you. I appreciate you. Appreciate Thank your you. time. Take care. Appreciate it. Thanks.